put the egg white on. I never in a million years that I would sit down with another young woman who knew some of the names I was teased in junior high, and she was too. And who would have ever imagined it'd be somebody who won a medal in, in the Olympics? It's just, life is very unpredictable and it takes some really wild twists. And you don't know that when you're just starting out. First time I ever saw a picture of Priscilla was, sadly, it was the day my dad passed away. And my sister was excited. She'd heard there was this Olympian that had a hereditary condition called partial lipodystrophy. And she showed me pictures that first day, but um, they were really muscular pictures, you know, and things I, I couldn't identify with what I was seeing. And it was a very hard day too. So I said, it was very interesting, but I said, we'll pick it up a different day. I actually show symptoms of two genetic disorders. I have autosomal dominant Emory Dreyfus muscular dystrophy, and ad in addition to that, I also show familial partial lipodystrophy. They're right next to each other on the same gene, and actually maybe that distinction is kind of fading away as we're realizing this is a very fluid situation with that gene, and many people are picking up symptoms of more than one disorder. The disease that affects our body fat development is what we share in common. So if you gave us each a, a picture of the human body and you gave us red for um, body fat and blue for not enough fat, and you had us just color in that body form, and then we turned them around, our pictures would look like each other. I think that might be our best bet. Where are you guys doing? Friday. As a little girl, I got to be about seven years old, and kids would see, all of a sudden it happened really quick. They would just say, how come your arms and legs are so little? And they'd want to wrap their fingers around my elbows or around my ankles. And I'd kind of bat them away because I, I didn't want to be different. I hated the questions. You know, I kept waiting for that moment the doctor would come in with a dry erase marker and marker board and, and start drawing out, okay, this is what happened. You have this. This is the gene. This is how it works. And definitely that was not happening. It's just sort of the going through the motions, push here, pull here, let's talk about, gauge your strength, what, what's going well or what's not. And it really isn't helping, you know, you've got to know, okay, well, what do I have? And, you know, I didn't know things about life expectancy or, you know, even just to explain to another person, okay, this is what I have and why. You, you just really have a sense that you can't go on with your life if you, if, if you don't have these basic questions answered. The hardest thing we faced was early on, I was expecting Martin, and after I delivered him, I could I walk a little bit, and so I was so excited thinking, maybe I just really could do this. And by the time he was about a year old, he was taking his first steps, and I was taking my last steps. And that's, that's really bittersweet. I just, um, you know, when I realized the day I couldn't walk anymore, I just, it was a moment of thinking, well, thank God I have people to take care of. I've got Jeremy. I've got Martin, Martin needs me, and you can get through it. I think it just helps so much taking care of people. You forget what you're dealing with because you got just too much to do. So, yeah. um, pretty much all I did was uh, studying for, with my, uh, for my YouTube account, which I really need to get a video on. Because <laughs> I still haven't got a video.